Hi, welcome back to our channel today. This is Theology Therapist. Today we are going to delve into a critical topic of building healthier relationships, and that is setting firm boundaries with manipulative individuals. By strengthening this skill, you can dramatically improve your mental well-being and enhance the quality of your interpersonal relationships. Now, I just want to say one thing. So this video, the idea for this video came from a viewer like you who left me a comment and said that it would be really helpful to know how to navigate conversations with someone who is trying to convince you to uh, be a part of their religious community and you don't want to, or who was trying to convince you to be religious itself and you're not interested. And so they asked, I just actually don't really know how to have that conversation or how to shut it down. And so the idea for the, today's video came from a comment from a viewer just like you. So I just want to encourage you that if you have an idea of something that would be helpful for you to know, leave me in a comment and I will throw it into the mix. Today's video is going to be just a little bit different than usual. I'm going to have some scenes and I'm going to be talking you through some dialogue over them. That way we can get a better understanding of some of the dialogue and some of the conversational aspects of setting boundaries that is really essential in figuring out how to get out of a conversation that you really don't want to be a part of. All right, so let's go to scene one. In this scene, this person is being approached by someone from a multi-level marketing, and so that could be like your doTERRA or your Mary Kay or whatever multi-level marketing. Hey, I noticed we haven't seen you at our meetings. We could really use someone like you. This is a typical boundary intrusion. When someone insists on you sharing the same belief system or joining their group without considering your comfort and personal boundaries. Oh, I know. Yeah, thanks. I've just been really busy. Don't worry. We have meetings at different times. When is a good time that you could make it? Yeah, I'm just really not sure that it didn't really feel like that great of a fit for me. And so, oh, okay. What about it didn't feel like a good fit for you? So instead of hearing this person's hesitation, the MLM marketer is really just trying to bulldoze forward, right? They're, they're not hearing, they're not doing any reflective listening. They're not saying, oh, I understand. Okay, yeah, it's not for everyone. They're really trying to get this person in no matter what. Now let's go to scene two. These are two friends who are meeting at coffee, meeting for coffee. Oh, I am so overwhelmed with everything that's happening. Let me tell you about it. When someone starts trauma dumping, it's important to compassionately set limits and prioritize your own emotional well-being. Let's watch the response. It sounds like this has been a really tough time for you right now. I am so sorry to hear that. I am going through something myself right now and I just don't feel like I have the capacity in this moment to give you the support that you need with all of this. Would you mind if we talked about something else today? It's important here to remember that this isn't to set a boundary whenever someone is being vulnerable with you or sharing like parts of their lives or complaining or whatever it is. There's some aspect of like friendness, friend quality in within that type of relationship as well. But I like want you to picture in your mind that like trauma dumping. And we've probably all been in that kind of conversation where you're like, oh gosh, what, how, how do I get out of this? This person is clearly going through it right now and I'm not the person. So picture that conversation. This isn't just your like normal, like friend chit chat, right? This is all of a sudden you're getting just the download of someone's stuff that you didn't ask for. And so we want to figure out a way for you to say kindly, I hear you're going through something, but I'm not the person that can support you through this right now. Okay. All right. Let's go to scene three. We're at work here and this person is facing a false accusation. They are, they are being blamed for 
mm -hmm. the work not being delivered on time and for the quality being poor when they are actually just one piece in the wheel in the system and the it, the work wasn't delivered on time because it wasn't delivered on time to them from someone else who was working on the project. So the supervisor or the accuser says, you didn't deliver this project on time. This is all your fault. Here in this scenario at work, this comes up a lot. Unjustified guilt is a manipulator's tool aiming to shift blame and control. Our character calmly disp disputes the guilt and asserts their boundaries. I understand that this project, that we are past the deadlines for this project. Unfortunately, I received my leg of the work late. And so I am getting this to you as soon as I was able to. If this feels like a team issue, maybe we can talk to the entire team about how we can adhere to deadlines better. So see, this person was able to set a boundary to recognize that there was a wrong that happened, like the deadline was passed, but that they weren't the only sole cause of that problem and in, and highlight that or include that to the supervisor or the one complaining, accusing about this. Now, re important to remember that the goal in each of these scenarios is not to escalate the conflict, but to assertively communicate your needs. So stay calm, use I statements to express your feelings and keep your boundaries non-negotiable. It is so important to prioritize self-care and maintain healthy boundaries. Here you'll notice how this person's body language is really confident. You might imagine they're using an assertive but polite tone of voice. Remember that it's not just what you say, it's how you say it that reinforces your boundaries effectively. One important important thing to note when you are trying to exit a conversation that you don't want to be a part of, it feels like you, you didn't sign up for that, or uh, with someone trying to shift blame unnecessarily onto you, is to reflective listen. So I, I hear you're upset, or I hear this thing has happened, this has occurred, understand this thing has occurred, this deadline has passed, and I received my part of this project yesterday. So if you want to pair your reflective listening with the boundary. If I hear that you're upset, but I, I can't actually take all the blame for this. So here's a creative solution. So I need to go if we can't relate on something, on something neutral, or so maybe we can meet as a whole team to discuss this issue. There might be another time when not in this period, I would have more capacity to help you through something like this. Since I don't, I'm happy to give you the number or help you find a therapist or if you'd be interested, right? So it's really pairing reflective listening with a firm boundary and a creative solution. Thanks for watching today. I hope these practical tips empower you to maintain healthy and respectful boundaries in your relationships. Setting boundaries is not selfish. It's an essential act of self-care that contributes to your overall well-being. Remember that you are not alone in this. I would invite you to join our community and share your experiences so that we can all grow stronger together. I would invite you to share these experiences below in the comments as much as you feel comfortable and together we can support each other and learn from each other as we navigate towards healthier relationships. Bye friends, see you next time.